Hey friends, welcome to my channel. Today we are talking about how deep learning for fault detection works. The main takeaway as a professional would be understanding the limitations and advantages of using AI for fault delineation. And as a developer, knowing the easiest way to jump on this subject. My name is Ruslan, I am CTO at a software company that develops AI solutions for oil and gas. As a base of today's explanation, I've selected monumental work in this area. The work shows how to train neural network based on synthetic dataset and provide nice results within the real dataset. The publication titled FaultSec 3D using synthetic dataset to train into a convolutional neural network for 3D fault segmentation by Xingming Wu. In this video, we'll go through why we use AI ML for fault detection, defining neural network architecture, preparing datasets for training, training process, and we end up with testing neural network on real data. Traditional methods are too sensitive to noises and other stratigraphic features that look like reflection discontinuous on seismic images. They assume that faults are vertically aligned and stratigraphic features laterally elongated which is not common in many instances. Anyway, there have been a lot of development to improve fold delineation of traditional methods. They try to increase windows vertically, apply smoothing in particular direction to reflections, and many other improvements that did not bring quality to fold delineation, but only increase computational demand. So, the neural networks, right? It seems like a computer vision problem where all the features of the faultings are present in a seismic image. Even though the traditional methods fail to distinguish them correctly, we know the neural network is able to give quality results for image classification and segmentation. Let's consider if we can treat fault detection as a segmentation problem. An example from medical area would be retina vessel segmentation, which is really important for diagnosis and treatment of such disease as diabetes and hypertension. For training, they use pair of images of retina and vessel segmentation, where unit segmentation neural networks achieve good results with this task. It seems like an ideal fit for fault detection. Instead of retina images, we have raw seismic, and instead of vessels, we have fault segmentation. Then we need to understand what unit architecture is. The unit was introduced in 2015 by Ronenberg for biomedical image segmentation. It consists of two parts, one contracting and the second expanding. It gives it a U-shaped look. The contracting path consists of repeated convolutions with ReLU and max pooling operations, where spatial information is reduced while feature information is increased. Expanding path uses spatial, feature and high resolution information to reconstruct a segmentation. Since 3D seismic has strong imbalance between number of samples of faults and non-faults, a usual loss function wouldn't work for that. Therefore, we need to use balanced cross-entropy loss functions to drive the training process. By computing the mistype between ground truth data and the predicted result in the backend. The smaller the loss function's value, the better. Alright, so let's talk about data. We know that we got a supply neural network with a pair of images of raw seismic data and fault segmentation. Then we have two paths. We can try to interpret real data or we can generate synthetic data set. Each of them have their own weaknesses and advantages. I don't want to go into detail of comparison and discussion around the subject. That might be a good idea for my future videos. In short, real datasets are good in terms of representation, but they are limited by the ability of a human to delineate faults correctly. Synthetic generated datasets are error-free in terms of labeling, but disadvantage in the representing a real seismic image. Workflow of 3D dataset generation looks like the following. At first, generate horizontal reflectivity model, add some folding structures to the model, add some planar shearing to increase the complexity of folding structure, add planar folding to obtain a folded and faulted reflectivity model, convolve reflectivity model with a RICO that led to obtain a synthetic seismic image, and at the end add some random noise to obtain a final image. And finally we add the training process. For training they selected 200 synthetically generated volumes and additionally 24 validation purpose. The training goes with generated seismic subcubes of the size 128 in each direction. Augmentation follows simple strategy by rotations and flips. Rotations are selected from three predefined angles. And because every seismic might have different amplitude distribution, it's essential to normalize data that is coming to your neural network. It's been proposed to use mean standard normalization. It normalizes datasets by subtracting the mean and dividing by standard deviation. It took two hours of training and 25 epoch to train the neural networks up to the accuracy of 95 on validation dataset. 
For validation purposes, it's essential to take a look at the prediction on validation data set. Neural networks shows better ability to highlight faulting structures in the seismic image, and traditional methods struggle with synthetic noises, and faulting looks more disjointed than they actually is. All right, it's interesting to see how neural network that is trained on purely synthetic data set will be able to delineate faults on real seismic images. Let us see the first test on real dataset from the Netherlands offshore F3 seismic data. Although trained only on synthetic dataset, the network works pretty well to provide a clean and accurate fault prediction. The traditional methods like the fault likelihood work fine to highlight faults, but image a lot more noisier. Let's move on. The second seismic dataset is extracted from bigger volume across the Costa Rica margin. The fault detection is more challenging than the previous one because the faults are very close to each other and the image is pretty noisy. Here are the network probability at different scale. Most faults are clearly labeled and these faults can be continuously tracked. Fault likelihood at the same slice can detect some faults but the fault features are more noisier. Moreover, it mislabels faults especially in areas where seismic features are noisier. And finally, we add the last example. Uh, the next seismic is acquired at the Campus Basin offshore Brazil. This image shows that the sediments are heavily faulted due to the salt bodies at the deeper part. The neural network's fault probabilities label closely spaced faults in this seismic that is set clearly and accurately. On time slices, the faulting patterns are clearly visible. In summary, although the neural network is trained only on synthetic data set, it works pretty well for 3D seismic images that are recorded at totally different ways. Moreover, fault prediction using neural network is highly efficient. For example, when we take the medium-sized seismic cube, it takes only 3 minutes to compute for the neural network, and in contrast, fault likelihood it would take 1.5 hours. If you have any questions, then write them down in comments. All the links are in the descriptions to this video. And the next video is going to be more about hands-on experience of training your own neural network for fault delineation based on Python and TensorFlow. Stay tuned to that. If you like the content, then consider liking and subscribing to the channel.